news, everyone? You're obviously confused and aroused. to self breed giant cat to drag things in but for now you're listening to slurmcast a podcast for no raisin today we'll be discussing season 10 episode 9 leela and the gene stock my name is michelle burlingame not with me are tommy roulette how's it going pete woodward that's me and our guest today is zachariah durr i'm here Hello. yay here. Hi. welcome back I'm finally in the third timers club, so I'm assuming I get my mm-hmm. picture framed on a wall with all your other luminaries. I mean, mm-hmm. there's a coat, but technically it's two and a half because the one the first time you had to run away. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, it's funny because like it, before we started recording, we were talking about you switching jobs and saying like, yeah, hard news really wasn't my thing, and like you had to leave because it was when the guy killed someone live on Facebook and they yes. found him in Erie. And you yep. had to oh, like God. leave to go cover it. Mm-hmm. Like I, I gotta go. Um, but no, yeah, it's I, lovely to have you back. I do not miss those days. Lovely to be here. Just so you know that when you're when you're the third time guest, that's when you're gonna be named in the lawsuit if Fox ever sues us. Oh yeah, this is this is <laughs> hey, part well, of your three IP. or more times for guests. Any publicity. <laughs> George Dunn is fucked. <laughs> <laughs> so is Bill Squire. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Yeah. It's, it's So we've been, we're, we're so close to the finish line and episodes like this make me really, really happy of that. Mm. But like, really? been, yeah, I, oh my oh, God. This, this is a gross, I hate this episode. Painful. This is, this is one of my favorite episodes. So oh, good. We, we got some disagreement going oh. on here. Uh, but it, it's nice to get back the folks that have been super fun on the show to to kind of send it out on a high note. So I I, I just want to start by saying, number one, the Jumbotron is always a bad sign this far into the game because it means that they're trying to pad three seconds out of a show that they didn't quite have enough content for. But the Jumbotron appeared to be a fish barber. And the concept of a fish barber got my brain like <laughs> boiling. I'm like, that would, do fish have barbers? This is fantastic. Like, would they cut off actual scales or do they trim fins? Like, are, do fish, I, this sounds like an uh, purposely obtuse question. I don't mean it that way. I mean, there's fish with like little lights that grow out of their head. So like, are there fish with hair? I don't believe so, but I am not a marine biologist. I'm going to say probably not because hair is an extension of your sweat glands. And if there's one thing that does not need to sweat, it is a fish. But you know, it looks like it has hair and is one of the ugliest fish. And I've had to look at it a lot is the catfish because I recently had to edit somebody cooking catfish. My God, I I would (laughs) eat those every day just out of spite because of how (laughs) nasty they look. They're so delicious. like, were, were they taking it from, I mean, you know, pardon the culinary analogy, but soup to nuts was this like, we're grabbing it out of the tank or the river and you're watching the whole thing where they're gunning it and heading it and all of that stuff or? Uh, we left out the actual butchery, but to demonstrate what a catfish looked like for the common stupid person. <laughs> I put footage of catfish uh-huh. swimming and living their lives uh-huh. in the ocean. Oh, wow. Or the Wonderful. lake, I guess. I mean, that's great. Look, if if we weren't supposed to eat them, they wouldn't be so delicious and that that tips the tips the scales know. in our favor when we have di- uh, deep fryers. Anything ugly, you should not feel guilt about eating. Never never have. I would and I, I, I can honestly say I've never stuff. felt guilt about eating anything. <laughs> there you go. Um I the whole like the whole beginning of this with the redneck bar and stuff, I just, I couldn't pin it on if it was something that was happening topically when this episode was airing or if it was just like, here's something we can do. Are you saying in 2008, like line dancing was going through a revival? When was this? Uh, 2013. Broadcast? 13. Oh, well, mm-hmm. yes, that was the uh, boot scoop <laughs> era. I like I did I did like all of the uh the THX 1138 references with mm-hmm. Texas 1138 and the and Tex I guess having the the weird ear tag and shit. 
Um, but yeah, it just, yeah, there, I, I guess for as much as this episode sort of annoyed me, um, there were a lot of really good one-liners, I thought. Oh, there's definitely a few times that I like laughed out loud at the joke, but overall, I remember when this aired that I was just disgusted by, like, especially when Leela's on the bugalo and then Zoidberg uses the, uh, hammer to like unlock her hands it's just <laughs> gross it's that it's kind of like that fear the uh the fear the clustered of, like, the really clustered holes or holes. something yeah it's like trick so it's trick, the visual it's not the sound or for something you. like that it's the visual not the sound i don't care yeah the sound is actually kind of satisfying the suction cup is kind of a satisfying sound oh I pop mean- I mean, I definitely have. I, I get weirded out by the small hole clusters thing. Like, I definitely have some some visual triggers that make me feel uneasy. But at the same time, uh, tentacles with suction cups don't. Like, I love getting a good octopus sushi where it's still got the suckers on it and stuff. Mm-hmm. I've never gotten the one where it's still technically alive and can like attach on its way down your throat. But you know, it's so crazy I'd be about. Game that is that um originally half the time when you see like little squids or little octopuses um the reason why it looks alive is because they're pouring a hot liquid on it and the muscles of the yeah, octopus are the, oh, contracting. Like salt. contracted stuff. yeah the, however the salt in the soy sauce of some of those things make it like right it's it's a it's just a science experiment where the the muscles mm-hmm. are contracting so it looks like it's thrashing around i did it in my but, biology class with a rabbit muscle you have a much uh, cooler uh, science teacher than I did because we did no experiments. But the the recent gross trend that I do not support is actually eating an alive octopus or squid. That's all the new videos you see of like a young girl putting a squid in her mouth and the squid latches on and takes chunks of flesh Ugh. off of her face. That is because it is an animal fighting for its life. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. not cool. Yeah. I, like if it was just a tentacle that was still kind of wiggly wobbly, like... I'd go for it, but it feels like if you're not gonna, if you're gonna put the thing out of its misery too sweet, like, sure, let's let's, let's move on. Um, I do. I mean, like, so the whole, all of this being said about Texas eleven thirty eight, like, a hundred years ago when I was in college, like that was a that was a thing, especially with my girlfriend at the time. Like her her mom was super into line dancing. Like that was what they did and the shit just always boggled my mind because first of all like what year was that like roughly this is let's say 90 2013 (laughs) 95 (laughs) through maybe 96 or 97 okay that was i was in grade school at that time and we did line dancing every year for gym like phys ed. we did a square dancing when i was in grade no school. we did line dancing too like actual line actual dancing. line electric slide we learned the electric slide yeah i, I did that also and i'm only a few school. years younger than tom does it, it does we learned does it, one other like it was i don't remember what the song was or what but it was another actual like kind of traditional Texas but does the dance. electric slide count as line dancing i think yeah. so i mean it's it's just a they, that's what they call dancing. it yeah and so is the cha-cha slide Okay, I, I mean the whole thing with it is like <laughs> for the Brown same Charlie Brown for the, <laughs> for the same reason most parades creep me out. Like white people doing anything in unison in a choreographed fashion just makes the hair stand up on the back of my neck. Well, it, you it threw just... up when you saw the raquettes, right? You got oh yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. But that was from the smell. Um. <laughs> Just, just like about catfish, right? <laughs> oh God, Michelle, uh, I need you to intervene here. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I'm a guest. I can't do this. I, I, I like the line. It, I like the line where they're like, "Line dancing has is fun because there's no touching and lots of rules." Um, and then that led into Bender making the bet that he made, set a record on the electric bugalo, and then. He'd eat his hat if he didn't, but then Zoidberg was still like, well, someone should eat the hat and <laughs> did the big slather and barbecue sauce. There, there was a lot of prime gold was salsa. Uh, Zoidberg in this. Whatever. It was a red, a, a red condiment. Oh, guys, cool down. Cool <laughs> down. I never put salsa on my hats that I'm going to eat, Tom, just so you know. Maybe they do that in 
I think it I think it may have been barbecue sauce because uh Leela wins them a free steak dinner, so I'm I'm guessing it was probably like like a nice A one or something. Oh, it, there was chunks in it though. <laughs> there was there was green chunks in yeah. it. Oh, okay, okay. So maybe not. Yeah, salsa. that's to probably Tom's defense. Salsa. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not that I want to pick a side. Uh, yeah, you could tell the plot in this one is going to be thin because the first quarter of this episode is just sight gag theater where we're just yeah. getting like. Yeah. Everyone gets a gag on that. <laughs> How they're but getting I, I thrown like, off the bug. I did like, um, look out, little drunk Sheila. <laughs> it, <laughs> the, it is funny. The, I, the I child did laugh. in the bar. <laughs> now, you have all been watching these, obviously, more than I have and more recently. This is a very structury question, but are a lot of Futuramas uh, structured like The Simpsons, where the first quarter of it is just its separate, like, piece no. and has no bearing and, on the rest of the episode because it's really one just, big thing right right and i was just yeah. gonna make that point is that this one is very simpsons -y, where act one is just a complete fucking disconnect from yeah. acts two and three where like they take you on this little journey and you think you know where the episode is gonna go and then all of a sudden like bam leela's got tentacles like <laughs> it felt weird right <laughs> yeah they, that's a very simpsons um technique Mm -hmm. As I mean, far as the act structure. We're like four or five episodes from the end at this point. So a lot of this is running mm -hmm. on fumes. There's been some real stinkers in this <laughs> no final. No kidding. I could yeah, tell. <laughs> so, some real stinkers here at the end of the season. <laughs> Although, uh, that being said, my favorite episode of the 120-some that we watched did happen in the 10th season. It was an anthology, on non-canonical episode, but it was okay. it's fucking great. Which one is um, that? It's the Saturday morning fun bag. Okay, fun pit. Or, I'll fun give it a look. Fun pit. Um, the it's it's parodies of Saturday morning cartoons, including Scooby Doo, Strawberry Shortcake, and GI Joe, which mm. is re-edited by the head of Richard Nixon. Okay, and then he's he's cutting. To be in. more it's, family friendly. Yeah, mm. it's it's okay. I, I watched it twice and laughed out loud both times, and that has never happened on this show for me. So. It, it was something, but um, the the thing with like even so the whole part of 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 Leela getting you know she's getting the suction cups and Zoidberg's just like you know oh it's or or the doctor is fatal and I'm I'm losing the thread of what I'm trying to say but she she had the line like well I die listening to country music I think that's when Zoidberg was trying to treat her. And then he's yeah. like, not if we get you to a better doctor soon. <laughs> Let's um, like maybe a doctor check it out. <laughs> yeah, but that's that's part of the thing. It's like, oh, they were all enjoying themselves and having this good time. And then all of a sudden it's just like, you know, now it's now it's a fate worse than death. I, I don't know. It it just seemed very jumbled. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the drunk little Sheila was a great um, touch, which made me think about like, I, as children, how much time did you spend in bars with your parents? Honestly, uh, not as a child, but yeah, as a zero, but teenager. you go right ahead. <laughs> I, I did because my okay. aunt and uncle owned a bar for a while, which is actually now That's currently different. the, I think it's the Lakewood Village Tavern. It used to be hmm. a, a, when they owned it, it was like called the Overtime Pub or something like that. But I was up there a lot. I played Galactica a lot on the uh... <laughs> back when you could still smoke Arcade. in bars and stuff. Oh, yeah. like... <clears throat> and I would always My... have a, a Coke with cherries in it. That was that, that's what I would. <laughs> nice. I'm, I'm glad you added the suffix. <laughs> I'd always get coked up on that topped up, that flat top Galaga table. Uh, my my aunt and uncle used to own the bar that now that's classes now. Oh wow. Like a long ass time ago, so I I, I got dragged in there. But like the other thing was they they, you know, my my family liked to spend a lot of time at Putin Bay, and so they just dragged the kids out. I mean, back then it wasn't the it, it was a shit show, but not the shit show it is now. Um, but you, I mean, we spent a good chunk of our summer vacations just randomly sitting in bars like scraping for quarters to play video games and shit I, I i don't know i don't i don't like i guess if you're being a responsible adult and you're around people who aren't completely awful like 
I don't see a problem with having a kid in a bar, but having a kid in a bar be drunk and known as a drunk little kid. <laughs> that's like little kids. Makes swearing. them cool. Yeah. 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 I mean, sure. I bet I, drunk little Sheila was probably a big, big hit at school. <laughs> Maybe she wasn't a kid. Maybe she just like, you know, had one of those. A little I, person. Did Jenna. Yeah. No, I, I got that impression. Yeah. Like just looked like a little kid. But what about the stuffed animal? What about it? What about it? I mean, I, you know, I Thomas guess. stuffed animals. Is he a child? I was looking around to see if I could pull one out right now. What about <laughs> stuffed animals? Those, <laughs> those are animals that have died and he's had taxidermy Pretty to cool. preserve them for posterity's sake. Oh, no. um, I, we haven't we haven't seen um, Taco Bell General. Was it it's Taco Bell Hospital or Taco Bell General Hospital? Taco Bellevue. That's it. Taco, Taco God yeah. damn it. <laughs> that I was is take, a slightly better pun. <laughs> it is. I was taking a lot of um a lot of notes on this one, so I kind of missed some of it, but like the try our new chemo loco sign, I like that. <laughs> what where you didn't finish your sentence. We haven't seen it what? Ever? In a long time. Like oh, no, no, time. it's okay. been on it's definitely yeah, yeah. been on before. Um, yeah, because the Chihuahua <laughs> doctor was there. <laughs> right. Right. But, but watching but this, then, I thought I was hoping it was that because I didn't remember where that was, but as the doctor started going into squidification and its side effects and where she could have gotten it, like just Dr. Tenderman too. Mm -hmm. Tenderman. Tenderman. I, I didn't catch his name tag. I just caught the part of Fry saying that, that he might have given it to her because he doesn't wash his hands for years sometimes. <laughs> and and I, I mean couldn't... he was he was frozen. That's what I was wondering if he was referring to or if since unfreezing at this point. 10 years ago in, you know, in their time, if it right. was just, I mean, he's, he's, um, he's admittedly and been portrayed very much as a, as a terribly filthy person. Um, so that would make sense, but it, it reminded, I mean, this is just serendipity. I read this article today about, uh, a graduate student doing her thesis in nautical archeology span where they were recreating the food that you would eat on like a, a cross oceanic boat, like in the times, like in the 16, 17, 1800s, so like salt beef and, and hard tack and whatever. Can't wait to and see they, where this is going. Well, it, it, this is, this is, <laughs> there's, there's a second article I read today that, that caught my eye for a different reason, but this one, this is what was fucked up about it. They recreated a boat like an old timey ship. Then they recreated all of the food that they would have taken on that ship. Like when you say beef. when you say old timey, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting. But when you say old timey, what do you mean by that? I mean like the Santa Maria, the Nina, and the Pinta. Okay, very Columbus old times. timey. Not very like the timey. Titanic. Like <laughs> okay, like, like like the Mayflower. Right. And and so they were making the salt beef based on some recipe that was published in like 17 whatever. And, and they'd go on the boat once a month to check on the progress. And they'd put on gloves when they had to check on the meat. But before they they touched the meat, they put on the gloves so none of their modern bacteria hand stuff would get on it. But then they'd have to touch a bunch of the rigging to get the ship dirt on it. Cause they're like, them sailors weren't washing their hands. So if they're sticking their hand into this, the chum bucket, you wanna get whatever they're rubbing off on the ropes and the other riggings into the bucket. The other story that I read, just just to wait, put it out. Wait. What? Are you saying? I feel like there is a big part of this article you're leaving out. Are you saying they built an old colonial ship to see how food aged? To, to see There's... how how food oh. aged and if it was still actually edible, okay. given that. And they're like, sure. oh no, it smells rotten and it's disgusting, but it's still yeah. technically edible. Wow, I, I could have told them that without building a, a boat. <laughs> oh, this meat goes bad. You put it in the- um, Surprise. Put it on a boat. Not not when you put it in a bunch of salt water, yeah, apparently. Yeah, you have enough salt. They got, they got all worried. Good. They had sure. sourced 30 pounds of special salt from a French like sea town yeah, and then they got all worried because Hurricane Harvey could have knocked over the boat, but the boat yeah. was fine. They never would have known. 
The other story, and this is horrible, but this is my takeaway. So fuck me, because I'm an awful person. There is a horrible murder uh, down in Medina, huh. and the the guy who committed it and one of the victims, their last name was Dick, and that same victim whose last name was Dick, uh, he also killed her mother, and her name was Cox. So the woman who died, the younger one, her maiden name was Cox, and then she got married to a guy named Dick. Like, last name Dick. And I, that just that just seems made up, but it's true and awful. Mm. Sorry. Here there's comes the, the joke train. train. Yeah, there's the train. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, I'm going to go jump on that thing. I didn't. I mean, I didn't think it was jokey or funny. I, it was just a weird coincidence. Like it's We're going all from, just nodding our heads and not saying anything. This is it's, the kind of content <laughs> that you can only get on Slurmcast. Exactly. I'm trying yes. because I'm trying to draw a line from what you just said back to the episode. <laughs> it has nothing to do with the episode. I prefaced I know. it with that. I thought, but like, you know, is is going from Cox to Dicks an upgrade, or is going from Dick to Cox a down? I, you know, whatever semantics. <laughs> um, did 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 we know that Lila lays eggs? occasionally occasionally <laughs> no that is not something that we've uh learned before but uh she did have the we, we did the, the boil episode right mm -hmm. the, the susan mm -hmm. boil did we we did that one yes. already yeah we've yes. done that one yeah yeah wow. the, what a timeless skin. reference <laughs> a lot when of she has stuff. the the boil on her ass that is susan boil right yeah right. <laughs> with a with a beautiful voice mm -hmm. yes uh, which, and I'm sure I brought it up at the time, but reminded me of the movie Chatterbox. Go look it up on IMDb. Where, um, the, where this episode like started losing me was the whole Jack and the Beanstalk thing. Really? I hate it. Yeah, well, I, I mean, the fact that like the professor was so ready to just sell old Bessie. So like, yeah, let's. Like, when has anyone ever pulled a ship around? with the cord I, I just felt like it was stretching in this that's that's the it. joke <laughs> that's the joke is that it's like the, the jack and the beanstalk he takes the, the the family's prize cow to you know the market because they need money and he sells the cow for magic beans so that was the whole joke is that like the the ship is the prize cow oh, I, I get it that's, I I think it, yeah, that's why it, it made little dong dong like cowbell sounds when Fry was leading yeah. it through the streets. I thought that was so funny, and it was kind of cool that he, the 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 way they shot it, like made it look like he was pulling something normal around the corner, yeah. and then it was the ship. I think it lost just, me after the whole hammer tentacle thing. They just couldn't deal with it I anymore. Couldn't deal with it, I was grossed out. You guys just, just weren't uh, little girls who loved fantasy and and hentai. stories like I was. And we're, and we're not adult boys who like hentai, apparently, either. <laughs> Did the budget for Futurama go down after, like, when it went to Comedy Central or in these last days? The animation, I was like, boy, it, it looks so much simpler, and sometimes characters look a little uh, off in the way that they're drawn. Yeah, um, I think it depends on what is in the episode. Like, they'll spend a bunch of money trying to do those big 3D-looking segments. And there are some episodes that have a lot of that in it. Yeah. So there are some really expensive episodes, and then it seems like they kind of cheap out on some of the more... Got it. Okay, so it's not across the season. They're just stories. picking and choosing. Who yeah, that's yeah. kind of how yeah. I've seen it, yeah. Well, I, I mean, but the clouds on the bottom of the Flying Castle were actually pretty... Mm -hmm. pretty elaborate i i mean visually and and if anything going back to what you were saying about it because I, I agree the, um the juxtaposition of this like really fancy cgi versus the 2d you know korean animators stuff was it 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 was more jarring than it usually is like it stuck out a lot more against the normal background where a lot of times the the integration between the two is a lot better They're, like there's been some really cool graphics in the show um increasingly i think as it you know kind of gets here towards the end but i i think this was a throwaway episode sure that like 
you know, it's, it's very contained. It doesn't, you know, it could have happened at any point. It was just like, we got to pad out the season. Let's throw this in there. Yeah. Let the interns write it. I, I will say though, that watching this, even though this is a throwaway episode, I'm always amazed of how good Katie Seagal is on this show and what an MVP voice actor she is because I think she has the most difficult role on the show as Leela because she has to be the one character who is not a total over the top uh, caricature. She has to be yeah. sometimes serious mm -hmm. and grounded, but she still has to deliver comedic lines and you still have to have a, a affection for her, even though she is kind of the adult in the room. Yeah. And she is so good at playing this part, even if she's not given a lot of meat on the bone. It's just, it's, I'm always impressed with how good she is and I don't think she gets enough credit for it. I, I mean, I agree. As long as she isn't singing, I'm all for it. Like that's- You hate the singing episodes. I don't know why you hate her singing so much. I No, I've explained it because she sings rock and roll like a drama kid. She like it's well. She's supposed to have a bad voice, right? Isn't that part no, of no, the, no, the no. joke? No, her voice is her <laughs> oh. singing. Her singing voice is technically very good. She executes very well, but but the thing that rubs me the wrong way about it is, it's like it's too polished and putting on an affect of soul. So it seems doubly insincere rather than just being like, here's my voice. Like, I'm going to sing the blues. And you're like, no, this doesn't, it doesn't yeah. track with that. That's, that's the part that was me wrong. It doesn't sound bad. She sings on key. She's very, projects very well, technically very proficient, but it's the same thing as listening to like Ingve Malmsteen and being like, yeah, that's a lot of notes, but I don't give a fuck about any of them. <laughs> That's all. Her her acting, fantastic. Loved her on Sons of Anarchy. Loved her in Married with Children. Love her on this. Just keep the the you know the SM fifty seven away from her mouth. Yeah. She's the Ingve of uh, voice actors to you. <laughs> There's several, but this I've had to watch a hundred twenty episodes of this show sure. with it going back to frequently. her. Yeah, going back to her lines her her comedic delivery once they tell her that she's got squidification she says um this is one of those rare problems with no magic solution like yeah, exactly you, you, like problems. yeah like you you she delivers it so well that like it almost takes you a second to like get that yeah that joke that she just made a really good joke but she I, delivered it like perfectly with the magic bean situation like I did enjoy the huckster. Like for some reason that character as hackneyed as it is, like the guy who's just like, oh yeah, I'm gonna sell that to you, see? Like those guys I always enjoy. I feel like it should have been John Lovitz. And I, I don't know who did the voice on this, but like it was so Lovitz-esque that yes. I was <laughs> I was immediately ensnared. I loved it. It was the, the cure-all that cures a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Rheumatism, botulism, seborrhea, diarrhea, desiccation, perspiration, comma cold, and uh, um, what was it you said? <laughs> Squidification, if you, if say, you so. say so. Yeah, that that was beautiful, and and then you know coming back for the expected response of the professor when Fry has the magic beans, and and as far as we can tell, I mean the the guy who sold him the beans they probably did drop out of the sky on him he wasn't lying he was just assuming their magic I have a Go theory that we'll discuss we'll okay. get to it all right but when the professor called Fry a sack of bags of buckets of idiots yeah <laughs> I I liked that like I I've had to deal with some of those recently at work and it's it's so accurate it's very I mean it's very heavy handed but but a good thing. Fry you big dummy, <laughs> very much so. <laughs> is also another good, <laughs> another good line from that. Um. So it, you know, of course, he the the professor tossed the magic beans out the window. They start growing, uh, uh, you know, to nobody's knowledge. But uh, you know, like th just the whole thing of like. You know, Leela's gonna run away. Nobody's gonna like her when she becomes a squid, which it is just, 
this is know. definitely past hundred episode point in terms of the writers. Uh, and Simpsons really has this problem where you you know how everyone is going to react, which either can be great for your writers because you can play with that, or yeah. when you don't want to work too hard, you just go on autopilot. Fry's going to yeah. be dumb. Bender's going to say, shut up. Leela's going to be sensitive about something. And it's just kind of, I, I think that was my main feeling through the episode was just kind of like, wow, they were cutting out of, at 5 p.m. And mm -hmm. they we called it a yeah. wrap. Yeah, like, I, you know, just the uh, the one line in her going away letter that I, I love was, I'll miss several of you. <laughs> that was that was a good line. Yeah. I mean, like, a, and the assumption being, like, it's everybody except Zoidberg, because that's always the way. And probably Amy. I didn't, I thought she got along with Amy, except when there's any kind of romantic thing going on with anybody. You know, when it turns into romantic competition, I don't think the cost either comes. one of them would miss eat the other. That's possible. Um, I it, you know, but then instead of going in the sewer to live with her parents, there's a giant magic beanstalk and she chooses an adventure and, and climbs it like a champ with those tentacles. Like, well, yeah. I mean, don't, don't you wish you had tentacles like that, Tom, so you could just scale buildings and shit, like swing around? She's basically like Spider-Man. I, I wouldn't want tentacles. No? No. You'd rather shoot like webs out of your wrist or something? No, no, no. I mean, there's versions of Spider-Man that he creates the web shooting. They don't actually come out. He has right. like little, t I would do like a, a gecko or a spider or whatever. They have little tiny like hooks almost in their hands or feet or fingers. It, as far as Spider-Man goes, he has little tiny like hooks in his fingers so he can scale and grip into the smallest crevice of a, like a building or something like that. Mm -hmm. That would be okay with me. I don't want to be like slopping tentacles on things. That's gross. And I trust I've, a, a nothing ever in any sort of fantasy ever would I have tentacles for anything. I think in terms of the gross factor, I I wasn't I'm not crazy about seeing suction cups, but I'm okay with it. I do not love uh big growths. So when she started getting mm. the pieces of uh, tentacles growing out of her face, that's where I was like, eh, I'm not crazy about like the like the wiggly yeah, skin tags cool. and stuff. Yeah. Oh I did my not god. Like that. that the fish at the beginning on the jumbotron, that's what they were cutting off. That has to be why they used it. Oh shit. She had <laughs> yeah, she had be. the things out of her neck. Yeah. And the the fish barber cut the same things off of the one fish's face. Shit. All right. There you go. Uh, All right. We can end the episode now, right? Yeah, yeah. that's the solution. <laughs> you yep, cracked it. How did nobody notice a giant fucking beanstalk, though? That was the other thing. Like, it it was massive and right outside and in the middle of the city, and no one noticed it. Like, Leela's the first one to see it, and nobody else is around. Because they're stupid. It. They're yeah, all stupid. It, it grew super <laughs> fast. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then uh, as she climbed it and it collapsed under its own weight, that was some foreshadowing. Mm -hmm. She finds the weird cloud castle city and uh, mentions that it's the deluxe apartment in the sky or a deluxe apartment in the sky, <laughs> which I'm always going to be down for a Jefferson's reference. Like that's, Absolutely. that's been such, I just, I have such fond memories of that show. And I know that when I saw it regularly in syndication, like I didn't digest 90% of what was going on. But in in hindsight, like, love everything about it, especially the fact that Sherman Helmsley was really, really, really into acid and psychedelic music. Like, he's he was just like a crazy acid freak and would like have LSD-fueled psychedelic orgies in his pad back in the 70s because that's, that's what George Jefferson would do. Sounds about right. It's a beautiful thing. Um, but the unicorns, the rainbow flying eels, whatever. <laughs> Very pretty. Yeah. It looked like a Lisa Frank trapper keeper. Yeah, so Leela is um, captured and taken into the, the castle where she finds out that she is at Mom Santo. 
Yep. Uh, so it's mom's floating genetic engineering facility in the sky. <laughs> her experiments are illegal on Earth, but she can do anything that she wants in the sky. Because she's above the law. <laughs> yes. It's not a pun, it's a play on words. Is Mom Santo a reference <laughs> for something at the risk of sounding dumb? Uh, yeah, Mom Santo is the name of the actual company that does all that genetic engineering of food. Oh, okay. It was like a big thing around this time where right. people were, and I guess they still are, but no one really cares about that kind of thing anymore. Uh, people were super against the GMOs and right. anti-Monsanto. Many, um, many still are. Many still are, but they're just not as vocal as they used to be. They've got more ridiculous shit to be vocal about. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that was the the mom mom Santo reference. Got uh, it. Yeah. So uh, basically, mom just says they've you know they're working on the beanstalk project. So ordinary beans are a magical fruit, but they're tiny and pathetic. So they <laughs> spliced they spliced beans with elephant DNA for added heft. Um, it but, made me want a pine you pork. Like I'm yeah. <laughs> obsessed with that. I would I would try a pine you pork. It was already like pre cubed. Yeah, it had its own toothpick. It was, Have, looks great. Looks delicious. Are porcupines edible? Like, is that some sort of delicacy somewhere? Or are they have they been spared from being part of the, our food chain because I'm they're sure just so goddamn dangerous? I'm sure somebody somewhere eats porcupines. They're probably oh. a pain in the ass to prepare. I don't know if yeah. they're I don't know if they're dangerous, <laughs> but I'm sure they're a pain. Yeah, God, that's they scare me. They have a couple at the zoo, I think, in the uh, primate house. Mm. So they, they like being in dark, um, you know, sort of secluded areas or whatever. But like, they can just throw fucking arrows at you from their skin. That's fucking terrifying. I would guess they probably have the same amount of meat as like a, a groundhog, and we don't really eat those either. Not according to the maintenance guy at my old apartment. Oh. He uh he he had a lot of stories about groundhog eating. All right, so people do eat porcupines. Uh and the first thing that comes up if you Google porcupine edible is uh real world survivor is the name of the website. Porcupine oh, is nature's best survival food, and it's what's for dinner. The best survival food? Yes. Why is Nature's that? Nature's best survival food. They're packed with vitamin C. Ah, uh, porcupines can be found. Porcupines can be found all over the United States, and since they are not swift animals, catching one is easier than you might think. <laughs> oh yeah, my, my, my backyard is riddled with porcupines. This is great advice, guy. <laughs> I I love that this website is setting, uh, this might just be a troll. This is setting people off to go try and hunt porcupines and they're all winding up in the ER with like, you know, spines in their face. Is he saying it's the perfect food because it's like a banana? Like you can just eat that and you'll be fine and it never goes bad. Like, or, or, or this whole page, I am so, I need to, check this out later because yeah bookmark that. this is a very long article about <laughs> cooking <pork and pie. laughs> maybe they have a, a quote from kirk cameron i'm gonna be something. put on a list for being on this website i swear i, I mean we probably already are on a list oh my god two. chugs of porky meat can also be used in stews or stroganoff my wife and i make two types of stroganoff with venison or bear meat that porky meat can be substituted for for creamy stroganoff the pieces of meat are wow. mixed with two cans of cream of mushroom soup and it just goes on it's just, uh, okay. it's just make a stroganoff out of a porcupine <laughs> fantastic all right i'm this is one of those things where I'm just like, I'm, I'm done with the internet for now. <laughs> yeah, <a> that's, <laughs> that's really like, oh God. Um, I, I mean, I, and I, even after the fact of Leela finding the thing, like I feel like it really kind of just puttered along, but there wasn't a whole lot happening. Like Fry and Bender determined she climbed the beanstalk and then her boots fall out of the sky. So they climb up it or they take the, the little jet scooter thing up there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, uh, the one line from Fry is probably my favorite thing that he said in this was, remember that mural in my cousin's van? It's like it came to life. I keep telling you we didn't grow up together. <laughs> yeah. 
And, and then, you know, it turns into Rapunzel with a good, I, I mean, Adam West was clearly Adam West. Was that really Burt Ward too? Yes. I believe so, yeah. yes. Yes, it was. Two oh. depressing cameos from mm -hmm. old sounding men. I mean, look. Burt Ward I, sounded a little bit more excited about the paycheck than Adam West did. But isn't that Adam West's whole gig to be sort of like aloof and... He he sounded a little extra tired in this. Yeah. yeah. He, well, he's usually a little bit more of a twirl on it. He had to keep flapping his wings to stay up. He's a method actor. Yeah. Who? Um, Adam West, are you talking about right now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. he's he was at the time still almost Alive. pretty regularly on Family Guy, too. He yeah. was doing a lot of voiceover stuff at this time. And he does not sound that tired on Family Guy, right? No, no, no. He has... Mm -hmm. I, I feel like on Family Guy, they just like give him the lines and let them say it how he wants to and then just go For with sure. it because it's Why a wouldn't you? parody of himself. Right. This right. was just like him. I think he was just reading Batman lines and I think he maybe he was kind of annoyed because it was the Batman. Probably. I I don't know. At At whatever mm -hmm. point in his career he was, I think he knew where his bread was buttered. Oh, of course. I, I'm nev never downplaying Adam West. I love Adam West. God, God, yeah. Uh, I, you know, then then the rest of it, like just Leela was just a complete. She was all tentacles. Like she wasn't a squid. She was just a mass of tentacles. Like, I was I, waiting for somebody to throw her against the wall, and then she comes down like a wacky wall yeah, walker. Yeah, <laughs> that's they missed that's that. A yeah, that's a great gag. That would it take is probably expensive to animate, given the rest of it. But like oh, millions, <laughs> um, just but you know, then it it turned into that whole like escape scene, rushing through the like bending the door and like you know that and I know that, but this door looks pretty. Stupid. This door looks like, pretty that, stupid. I did laugh at that. That was that was a good line. Um, I'm not familiar with the names of the characters from Adventure Time, but Jake and Finn. Yeah, you know the little cameo by them. I hated because... that. I hated that so much because it was <sighs> such a bad joke. That's why, like, you're gonna have the Adventure Time cameo. He just says, "What time is it?" And Bender says, "Shut up." And like, because wow. they're voiced by John DiMaggio. I, like, I get that he's the same actor. <laughs> I get that it's the same actor, but like shut up that's the that's yeah the it was best not a funny joke, joke. it was not a funny joke a team will, of yeah. people can come up with right um yeah and then it's just kind of like uh it's just castle gags after that right they find the giant yeah pretty yeah. much it's all the same tall tales yeah yeah there's largey boy recliner and he tries to you know smash him Hulk smash kind of shit when she lets it like Leela, her empathy for trapped animals getting the best of her, and then it, of course it backfires. Um, I, I did, you know, again, it's odd and lazy storytelling that the drain they slip down in the giant's uh bathroom or sink or whatever mm -hmm. outputs into mom's office or throne room or whatever the fuck it was like so like if the giant got up to brush his teeth is he just spitting right in there slop like, water yeah i feel I, like it's maybe there's like a door that's like based on a weight and it goes down a certain way but if there's a certain amount of weight then it'll go another way i don't think that's how plumbing works tom it can't how do they get off the ship i can't even remember magic. is that really it it might be magic I mean, Leela had one of the small problems that can't be solved by magic, so therefore everything else can probably be solved by magic. Oh, wait, how, how did they get off of the Cloud City? Yes, I literally oh, don't remember how they got yeah. from that to Earth. So so Leela incapacitates Walter and Igner and Larry and Mom and takes over the rudder and starts crashing the Cloud that's, City down to Earth. That's right. I forgot about that. And they kind of zoom in against Planet Express and they jump out the window and she tentacle swings, you know, grabs the antenna and swings them around and they they land on the observation deck. Right. Um you know, just <laughs> what like so, this one. Why what Michelle, why what about it do you like it so much 
I thought it was not a very standard story with Leela getting tentacles. I don't know. It just seemed like I, I, I'm just also a big fan of, of like those fantasy children's stories okay. like Jack and the Beanstalk and stuff. Yeah. So it just kind of it just kind of ticked off my boxes. To be not honest, hentai, and I definitely don't want that associated with me just now saying ticking off my boxes. Uh, that is a that is a good way to refer to it, though. Really tick my boxes. Yeah, it's everything uh, on the checklist. I I agree. I think that, uh, and this is, and if if you enjoyed it, I am glad you enjoyed it. I think I've seen the Leela storyline when she is talking about being a mutant and has her. A reunion with her parents mm -hmm. which is of course such a giant emotional uh arc for the show that to do kind of the same storyline again but it's just a goof feels a little uh anticlimactic for for me yeah like and like that's honestly the last time you see leela's parents in this is series, it really right? i think yeah. so yeah there's huh. only but like, like, like episode left. And... Even the fact that she's surprised she's growing fucking suction cups and tentacles, like her mom is squidified. Like, yeah, her mom has you know, tentacle arms. Like that would, I don't, you know, they know about genetics a thousand years in the future, clearly. Yeah. So what happens is that uh, basically mom says that the, the DNA sample that they took from Leela they were able to strengthen the magic beans, you know, the, the elephantine so beans with tentacles, so they won't collapse. So but, they've- but does it make sense? No, but it, it is does. convenient. It makes sense. <laughs> they can, the tentacles can stick to things to keep the stalks- Okay. Tom, um, at, upright. At, yeah, this it, point, at this point in the episode, I paused it and I was like, there's a minute 30 left to go and they have to wrap all this up. I can't <laughs> wait to see how they barrel through yeah. this. So mom and Leela have uh, some words, some heated words about uh, basically genetic modification of food. And I know there are some very conflicting opinions on GMOs, but I think if we, if the world did not have GMOs, we would not have food. And that's just a basic fact of life. And I think this episode is trying to get at uh, some political commentary that was really hot button in 2013 that maybe uh, isn't, doesn't really strike the same notes as it did back then. I, I don't know why. Is there anything else going on now well, that might take precedence? <laughs> And I think they were trying well, to strike it very, very, like literally in the last two seconds of the episode. I think yeah. it makes it feel a little flat. Yeah. I mean, I think mom brought it up earlier on, but it's it's like, you know, when she's showing the lab and why she's doing it and whatever, she's like, yeah, I'm going to give people a bunch of food and I'm sure. going to make a bunch of money. But yeah. we're not talking like South Park levels of uh, satire here with that. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> the the. Uh, like resolution of this episode is almost like a direct drop from like the climax of it. Yeah, so it it carries on the theme of Leela also being like a a social justice warrior hypocrite because the second mom says I can cure you too, she goes okay, and then suddenly is back to regular old Leela. So it, that is also you know an ongoing theme throughout the entire show is that Leela always pretends to be this outraged moral you know when convenient yes yeah you know be being the voice of reason in so much as it's convenient and it's, then, because yeah. you're not tested that's the perfect uh like explanation for the last episodes in this season even like for the last like 10 episodes it's been all these characters have been what they are for convenience almost. And yeah. there isn't as as much like there was so much character building, but then it reached a peak and then it never went anywhere else. I mean, at what point did they know they were getting canceled the second time for good? Like, did they finish this season and then Comedy Central dropped them, or was it were they halfway canceled? through? Or were did they decide to uh, wrap it? No, they. Yeah, were, I, I don't. I think they were canceled, but they were given an opportunity to wrap it up. Okay. So, I mean, I don't know what that is, but it's also hard with. I think also like animation 
uh, shows to grow to a point because they are animated characters. I mean, mm-hmm. I'll be honest. The Simpsons, I haven't watched in like the last two seasons, and I love The Simpsons. I just I haven't, haven't watched it since 2002. It in the last like few seasons. And what I do catch, I'm like, oh, this is not what I wanted. I still watch it because I'm stubborn and set in my ways. And I, that's, I get that's that. on brand. Yeah. <laughs> and there's there's truly there's only so many characters. Oh, there's a couple of characters. There's only so many stories that you can really tell with most characters. So once mm-hmm. you hit a hundred, you have probably hit the lion's share of what those characters are are capable of in terms of surprising your audience. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. And and like I you know maybe maybe an exception to that would be King of the Hill where the the one thing they did gradually and, and in minimal amounts was like you had the characters like Bobby and um Con Jr. where they did like start as children and kind of go through puberty a little bit. You know, I think like I, I can't remember when I was watching it regularly and stop, but like they did have them characters actually aged on the show. I mean they did you didn't mm-hmm. see it necessarily, but they went through those those yeah. changes. And that was on for thirteen seasons and it got right. it got canceled. But they were allowed yeah. to wrap it up. And so it's also, I think, with animated shows, it's like, how far can you go? And The Simpsons is going to be set that precedent, I think, or South Park. Because I, well, both they're of both those... 20 years plus. Simpsons is pushing 30, right? Right. Simpsons is on like 34, 32, Jesus 32. Christ. The Simpsons premiered the week before I was born. The Sunday before right? the... 88. 88. The Sunday, yeah. the Sunday before... The Sunday that I was born was the first episode of The Simpsons. Boy, so I you... have, I've never lived in a world where The Simpsons did not air. That's and distressing you... on a number of levels. <laughs> you, your first words were "Don't have a cow." Uh, yes, <laughs> uh, cowabunga. Oh, that's right. And uh, quickly moved on to uh, do the Bartman. Uh, yeah. Before I... I was doing the Bartman before I could walk. Before you could walk, you were doing yeah. 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 And then, and then <laughs> South Park was. 97 so almost 10 years after that so Mm -hmm. they're another and they're they're actually like kind of almost the opposite spectrum of the simpsons when it comes to like yeah and i believe i believe their most recent season was season 24 just because of the way that comedy central aired their seasons it's not been on for 24 years but it's maybe it has i don't know do that math i mean i (laughs) And, and again, I, you know, as the resident old man here, like I remember the the internet sharing of the spirit of Christmas, you know, where like the South Park characters were introduced and you had Brian Boitano come and save the day. But when they did and that Mr. first- Hanky? No, 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 no. Oh. The, the very first, the, the very first like little internet short that got them the show. At Santa Claus versus Jesus. Yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I like the like when when they finally had the series. Like, I I was ready to graduate from college, and we had like a party to watch that Christmas show where Mr. Hanky got introduced. Like, yeah, it was Mr. <laughs> Hanky and Kyle's mom's a bitch, and that was like that was the thing that exploded them. That was yeah. shown so much. I remember like it it was that season. 97 i was in eighth grade and holy crap that was it literally and at what point (laughs) at what point with these shows uh, these cast members are getting genuinely old like at some point the simpsons and i i also have not watched current episodes of the simpsons they've got to be sounding a little winded at this point at what point with these shows, if they just want to keep going and printing their own money, and I mean, Disney owns The Simpsons now, and they are famous for keeping those trains chugging as long as they keep getting paid, at what point do you go, we need to now transition to a new actor for this character? No, they wouldn't have I, I don't to. think they will. No. They could even take they have so much every bank, episode. You think? They could, like they did with Isaac Hayes in uh, South Park when he quit. Or Roger Ebert. It. Like, yeah. There's yeah. so much of uh, Dan Casanella and so much of everything 
that they could just be like, okay, you're done because you're retiring because you're so, you know, like you've done yeah. it for so long. That's the only reason what they're going to leave. So we're just going to pieces parts your voice so we're into part, new episodes. Or they're going to end it, which at some point they need to. They can't just keep But I, I do need it. to correct myself because I was wrong about the premiere date of The Simpsons. I thought it was, <laughs> it, you're right. So it, it was actually, 89. it was it was the month after I turned one year old. It was 89, yeah. There's, that's, the, you know, that's it, really yeah, not, I, not, maybe a, I was not a massive Maybe I was with a short or some one of the shorts or something, but yeah, On Tracy it, Ullman? Yeah, but yeah, it was, uh, I guess I ha I lived in a world without the Simpsons television show, but they still existed in the shorts before I was born. So. The, just I it, we we <laughs> seem to have thankfully gotten through the episode. There were two lines towards the end <laughs> that I just want to call attention to. Mm -hmm. When Fry and Leela are having their heartfelt talk, when she's got tentacles stretched out like a swing, and she's trying to kind of let him go so he doesn't have to be shackled to a monster. She's like, whatever it is we had together goulash like yeah. <laughs> I love maybe that. it was goulash <laughs> and then when mom cures the giant and he comes out fee fi hi i'm stan <laughs> like i loved that too that would that was a good curveball so late in this mediocre episode like i enjoyed that where he's just like oh yeah she fixed me again kind of weighing in on the side of like yes genetic stuff isn't necessarily bad let's Let's listen to the science. And here we are, however many fucking years later. Uh, it's Once all again, fake. not it's listening to up. science. Yeah. Because <laughs> I don't have to, because you can't make me, because of the First Amendment or something that I've heard about. Well, I'm oh. glad you brought that up, because I wanted to talk about how uh, the lie that we've been told about this disease. <laughs> God, who knows what uh, bullshit no, is going to be me. happening in a month when this comes out. <laughs> you know, we right? mentioned also in this episode Taco Bell view, and you have a Taco Bell sign right behind you. <laughs> I do. Portrait and, of my family yeah. behind me. There's, all, I, think, I believe there's also a Taco Mobile. I, yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. <laughs> is, is, I saw some things posted on Facebook earlier. Is today the final day of cheesy potatoes and whatever? Oh, no, that was like two weeks ago. You're, oh. You missed it. I, I'm like, I don't get to eat anything fun really anymore on Weight Watchers, well, but I sure still get to drink. You know, it's it's sad because vegetarians would get the potatoes as like a replacement for when they got Taco Bell. But if they thought that those tortillas weren't being made with lard, I don't I don't know huh. what else to say yeah. to to you, you vegetarians. I I admire your willingness to not eat meat. I do not begrudge you your Fiesta potatoes, but uh, are those lard based? They have to be. Well, <laughs> the potatoes, are the potatoes are the made tortillas. With lard. Fair tortillas enough, fair are enough. made with lard. That is well, just how, like, they are made that way. Right, but wasn't that just a bowl of potatoes with some fake cheese squirted well, on top? They got rid of the potatoes and everything. So your quesadilla right. is gone. Your vegetarian taco with potatoes and beef, like, they're it's potatoes. I think they got rid of those potatoes because, it, as because uh, Idaho is full of white supremacists. It, it was the one. Th thing that was actually like a volatile food substance that could age mm -hmm. whereas everything else is just rehydrated in a bag so they were like these yeah. potatoes are a real pain in the ass taco bell's meat is only 80 percent beef mm. yes it's dehydrated and you put water in it and you yeah. boil it a teenager boils it up mm -hmm. you know what i do now <laughs> i get the taco bell uh taco seasoning packets and i make mm -hmm. my own tacos at home i swear to god like the beef tastes exactly like taco bell flavoring wise but it's just way more fulfilling because it's actual... it tastes like disgusting real meat yeah real meat yeah. <laughs> interesting what you should do is but put it on a boat their, in a barrel don't get their <laughs> three um, months don't get their uh shells the taco bell shells in the store suck you can't even fit anything in between I, them because they're so i can't believe together. that Stand and stuff, quality. maybe. <laughs> you gotta get those stand and stuffs with the flat bottom. We have time Man, night at my house uh, <laughs> once a week, so. Good for you. All right, so I guess we're gonna wrap this one up. Yeah, uh, so, uh, you know, on our way out, 
from both this show and you know, this episode and the show in general. Any parting thoughts or plugs for our friends in the ether, uh, Zechariah? By the time this comes out, um, which I was told was October? Ish. Yeah, a couple of weeks, yeah. Okay, with that raring confirmation. <laughs> if it is after or during October while you're listening, um, I will be hosting a horror movie night every Saturday on WUAB 43. If you happen to live in Cleveland, Ohio, I will be hosting the Big Bad B Movie Show uh, with my friend and co-host, Laura Wimbles. We former having... former guest and friend of the show. Former mm -hmm. guest. Um, and we are performing as Leopold and Lenora bringing you whatever public domain horror movie they bring us that. <laughs> I cannot wait to watch. That. I'm I so excited. Yeah. I'm so excited. Like, uh, congratulations on that happening, and I can't wait to see it. Now, I have to find somewhere that I can watch it. So, will there be internet streaming or? I I do believe. Or, I mean, do you have any kind of cable provider? Uh, I I'm. Uh, can you get? I it? haven't. Uh, I have an antenna. antenna. Yeah, it's on antenna TV. Then yes. It should be. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's just like oh my god! Like when I was younger, just like watching Superhost. all like the. Or not even that, but just the local people hosting the shows on three, five, eight, seven, yeah. forty-three, like all of those, all the local people doing stuff. That's so cool. Oh, it's a, it's uh, astounding that there's going to be a local uh, program again because really, that is a, a dead mm -hmm. art right yeah. now. So yeah. I, I'm beyond pleased that I get to be That's part of so it again. Cool. That's that's right. fantastic. Um, I cannot and, wait. Yeah. Any anything else? Or do you have any other projects that are out there? Or I imagine that's taking up a lot of time. But anything else for people to check out? Uh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> not yeah, publicly not... available that I, I know to throw to you. No. Yeah. Not much going on live with comedy. Ah. Uh, so. Yeah. No. It's... Yes. All my shows are on hiatus. Um, I mean, there's a couple projects I'm working on, but that will be the quickest way for people to get a big dose of me. And, and Laura, Wonderful. and it's gonna be. I can only like the wheels in my brain on what is that's actually going to be are yeah. turning. This is another and, fish barber for you. Well, no, no, <laughs> but knowing knowing the two of you and like the synergy that will result from being involved with that like that's you're going to you're, you're going to exceed my wildest imagination because my imagination has well, let's I, tone it down a little bit but i we're, i we're have try i have a finite imagination oh like, well then we'll meet it yeah yeah i mean like it, you're you're only going to hit that bar or go higher and i can't wait. <laughs> I think Bender's chest cavity broke Pete's brain like three it, years ago and it has never recovered. <laughs> that that and the, the child and the divorce and the heavy drinking and But mostly Bender's chest cavity. Yeah, absolutely. Mag magical magical chest cavity. What the fuck is that? Mm -hmm. Um That's how most well, problems are solved. <laughs> with magic. Perfect. So again, thank you so much for coming on. Very excited about the new project. Um, so we'll uh, shit. There's our new podcast idea, guys. When we run out of this, we start commenting on them. Oh boy. Uh, what about uh, <laughs> Dis how about Disenchanted? <laughs> That's <Yeah>. pretty good. <laughs> uh, no, it, I, it, it'll be exciting if you're able to catch it uh, out there in the internet. You should. Um, we can get found um, <clears throat> at slurmcast.com on Facebook on Instagram and uh, uh, what's the other one? Twitter, <laughs> slurmcast.pod, uh, uh, oh, gmail, slurmcastpod wanna... at gmail.com. I just remembered we were recently sent some really awesome fan art. Can you believe oh, yeah. it guys? Of... We have fans. Of you? Who do art. Yeah, no. like of, well, no, it wasn't of us, flavors. but it was, oh. yeah, it was of the, um, I've been cast. scared to post it because it's using copyrighted characters that Disney owns now. Fuck it. <laughs> but oh, it's you'll great. be fine. If people Fuck at it. DeviantArt can show yeah. like Tangled getting rammed, then I'm sure that- Fan uh... art is totally fine. And we're okay. not publishing it for money, so it's fine. Post it. 
Let's post it. All right, let's put it up there. So thank you to uh, Tom, who was, what was the name of that person who sent us the awesome fan art? I, there was no name. Um, what? Yeah. All right. It was just, Don't give the phone number. It, no, I was going to say. <laughs> it was, it was texted to number. us. Yes, it was texted Ooh, to us. Spooky. It will be posted <laughs> on our social media soon. Um, if I can, I'll just, just find out hopefully somebody whoever created it will tag us but it's great it's really yeah. good yeah take take credit for it because it was very very good and and uh if this Public episode was will... still around then maybe it could be a tea <laughs> <laughs> yeah whoops whoops um i the last one was 216 438 1077 yep text us some more fan art or pics of your butt or pics of your cat <laughs> Or, or really anything. Just make us not feel dumb for having gotten that number five years ago. Perfect. And visit slurmcast.com. Yeah. Uh, give it enough traffic needs. to make us give it <laughs> enough traffic to make us keep paying for it after we're done. <laughs> and oh, and, and do the rate and review in your part, your podcast application. And, you guys have really gotten your outro <laughs> tight. <laughs> These oh, 200 episodes the have paid off. <laughs> It's been it's been it's been a long week, Zachariah, and we haven't done this in two weeks. You, sure, I mean, oh, who can remember? I I forgot you were even here, Zachariah. <laughs> well, he left early the last time, so he wasn't. He doesn't know that this is how the outro has been. For that is years. true. This is all new for me. Yeah, it's it's look, we're loosey goosey, and that's that's what we the, were, that's we what the people like. We recorded an episode a few weeks ago where we just talked for like a whole half hour after we did the, was that Jeff Lang? I believe it was Jeff Lang's episode. We talked for like a full half hour after we started doing the outro. Okay. So yeah, <laughs> that's how it, it goes, his, man. And, gotta, and, gotta live uh, with it. That's it. That's us, baby. That's how we roll. Yeah. You know, there, there's, I'm told that there's good episodes coming up, but there can't be many of them. Mm-mm. <laughs> Nope, we only got four <laughs> episodes to record, so. Fantastic. We have another cry, crier tomorrow, uh, next episode is a uh, tearjerker. I mean, if you have feelings, it is. Mm, yeah. We'll see. And then it's one of my favorite episodes after that. Perfect. Mm. Well, all right. On that note, let's, uh, let's fucking stop this shit. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Your bye, famous bye. closer. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>